The topic for today is multiple sclerosis and Lyme disease. This is part four in a video series that I'm doing outlining all the different types of infections that are causing multiple sclerosis, the infections that we need to treat to recover. And today I'm going to be talking about Lyme disease, what it is, how we get it, what the symptoms are, and also how is this part of the infections that are causing multiple sclerosis. If we haven't met yet, my name is Pam Bartha. I am the author of Become a Wellness Champion and the founder of Live Disease Free. And it is such a huge privilege and an honor for me to share this with you because I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 30 years ago, but by the grace of God and a lot of work on my my part, where I was treating infections early on, I have been able to live MS-free for the past 30 years without disease-modifying drugs, living a full active life because I learned about this lo a long time ago, many, many years ago. So today I've created some slides that I want to share with you. So I'm going to head over to the slides right now. If you haven't had a chance to watch the other videos that I created talking about the different types of infections that cause multiple sclerosis, make sure to watch them after you finish this video. So part one, I talked about MS and filarial worms. Those are small, very small nematode worms that were found in every single MS patient tested by Dr. Alan McDonald. Part two, I shared actual pictures, disgusting pictures of parasites that our students are passing as they are recovering from multiple sclerosis and other chronic diseases. In part three, I shared with you this huge link between fungal overgrowth in the body and not just multiple sclerosis, but all chronic disease and how that needs to be treated. So those are amazing videos that I shared, lots of pictures, lots of information, make sure to watch them after. It will really help you to understand what you're dealing with and what you need to do to recover. So with respect to Lyme, because that's a topic for today, Lyme disease, what is Lyme disease? And what infections are involved in Lyme disease? And some of you may not know that there are multiple microbes involved. It's not just one type of, let's say, bacteria. How common is it and what are the symptoms? Lyme disease is a condition and it's caused by vector-borne infections. Vector meaning they're biting insects. So we're getting infected with the microbes that are associated. So there's more than one and we're gonna talk about three of them today. There's more than three, but for time, we're just gonna to stick to three really common infections, uh, microbes that are involved with causing Lyme disease. And so we will talk about Borrelia, which is the traditional bacteria that is associated with Lyme disease, but we'll also talk about Babesia because that is very common in multiple sclerosis and Bart Bartonella is also, and Ehrlichia, but we'll just talk about the first three today. So again, we are becoming infected by these microbes through biting insects mostly. That's the main cause. So things like ticks, but also mosquitoes. And a lot of us don't realize that most of the mosquitoes are infected with these different microbes. Horse flies, fleas, biting flies, lice, and uh, fleas on our cat, and sand flies. It really is an epidemic, not just in North America, but also in other countries also. The the CDC estimates that there are more than 300,000 new cases of Lyme disease every year. That is an old statistic, so it is much higher. And the problem with Lyme disease is that because we don't always show symptoms right away, and so it's been largely ignored by our standard of care, we don't have good tests. The best test, traditional test was the Western blot, and it can be 80% fault, give you 80% false negative test results. That isn't very helpful. And then very often the symptoms of Lyme disease will develop in days or months after we are infected. And so the problem is if we don't catch it right away, and treat it with an antibiotic, that will work. But if we wait and it becomes a chronic infection, then the antibiotics are just not very effective at helping us to clear this infection. This is an actual picture of the bacteria that causes Lyme disease or Borrelia. And it looks like a little corkscrew and it is a spirochete. There are at least a hundred different species or kinds of this spirochete in the United States alone, so in North America, and most people that are 
bitten by a mosquito or a horsefly, they're not going to show the bullseye rash. And sometimes it's not until the second or subsequent bite that we actually show this rash. So there is a characteristic bullseye rash, but most people don't show that when they're infected. And some people don't know that number one, they were bitten. And so they may just kind of think they're dealing with a flu and they may not get the proper care and the treatment right away. And then we end up with the Lyme moving out of the blood into the tissue and we have chronic Lyme. Again, so it is an epidemic and it is always, I wouldn't say always, but not with all chronic disease maybe, but with neurological diseases, it is usually some of the infections that we need to treat for sure. This is a picture of red blood cells and you'll see that one that's more pinky and the purple inside, that would be an immune cell. So where the arrows are pointing, those would be two little spirochetes. They look like little threads, little corkscrew threads. And so those would be two bacteria that are Borrelia, which is the main bacteria in Lyme disease, the one that is really getting the credit for Lyme disease. So that's an actual picture of how big they are. So some of the symptoms of Borrelia, they come and go. The symptoms come and go. That's really characteristic of Borrelia. We can have fatigue and weakness and joint pain, stiffness and or swelling, fevers and chills, gastrointestinal upset, so digestive issues, bladder issues. This Borrelia loves to live in the bladder and also pelvic pain, blurred vision caused by optic neuritis. And optic neuritis is something that we get in MS, lightheadedness, severe depression, mood swings and rage. There's something called Lyme rage, which is where people just, they overreact and children can also, and it's absolutely horrible. And it is something that is part of this condition. Confusion, cognitive dysfunction, twitches and jerks, like when your muscles are twitching and jerking and also seizures, sensations of itching and burning and stabbing pain or pins and needles. And what's so crazy is that when they're looking at MRIs, that the Borrelia can cause the same type of damage or what they would see on MRIs as what they're seeing, the lesions in multiple sclerosis. Babesia is another one of the microbes that travel together and are part of the Lyme disease. So again, we can be infected by these biting insects, but we aren't going to show all of these bacteria and all of these microbes at the same, like we may have stronger Borrelia and Babesia or Bartonella, et cetera, but Babesia is linked very often with multiple sclerosis. It is a protozoa similar to malaria. So it's a single cell parasite. You can see that these are red blood cells in the picture on the right-hand side, and they are infected with this protozoa. So Babesia likes to infect red blood cells. And again, we get this protozoa through biting insects. Symptoms of Babesia would include headaches and brain fog, memory loss, day sweats, night sweats, and chills. When I work with students, women, a lot of times they think, well, I'm going through menopause and I'm getting all these hot flashes. Very often it is caused by these infections. And as they treat the infections, they realize that it not, wasn't their hormones, but it actually was the infections that was causing these day sweats and nice night sweats and also chills. Air hunger. If you feel like, man, I just feel so winded. I shouldn't be breathing so heavily walking up this slight hill. Air hunger is a definite sign of abesia. And a dry cough, tinnitus, red spots on the torso. They look like little blood blisters and on limbs, and then buzzing in the middle or the bottom of the feet. Bartonella is another microbe that can is part of the infections that cause Lyme disease. It is a bacteria. It can infect different parts of the body, the liver, the spleen, the eyes, the kidneys, the lungs, the red blood cells, and the central nervous system. This bacteria is spread through biting insects, but it's also spread through animals, through scratches and bites. Like if we get a bite from a cat or scratches from a cat, cat scratch fever is definitely 
caused by Bartonella. And so definitely we can get these not only just from the biting insects, but also from different pets and scratches. Here's a picture of red blood cells infected with Bartonella. Bartonella symptoms include, there, as I, these Bartonella symptoms are varied, and I'm just including a few. The same thing with Borrelia and Babesia. There are many, many symptoms, many neurological symptoms, but some of the more common ones would include fever, swollen glands, especially around the head and the neck and the arms, joint and muscle pain, numbness, brain fog, headaches, memory loss, hallucinations, extreme rage, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, and psychoses. Stretch marks, not the stretch marks in pregnancy, but you can, they look like stretch marks that you would see in pregnancy. Seizures, tremors, they can affect so many different parts of the body. So we can have cardiac disorders, skin disorders, hearing disorders, eye disorders, and many neurological disorders. So these are just three of the microbes that are involved in Lyme disease. And there are a few others also. So you can see how you can have two or three or four or five of them. And if they're a little bit too populated in the body, they can give you this array of different types of neurological symptoms. And again, they can affect different organs. They can affect your heart. We can have racing heart. They can be, as I mentioned, in many different parts. On my website, Live Disease Free, livediseasefree.com, in the main menu, you'll see there is a search, a research tab that you can click on. And then you can look at the studies that I've collected there for you. And I know studies can be a little bit complicated, but at least you can see that I'm not making this up, that these are real studies coming from prestigious journals like The Lancet, for example. And in fact, there were more than 50 MS spirochete references prior to World War II. So researchers were finding many, many years ago, they were finding that people that had MS had these really peculiar corkscrew spirochetes, they call it, going back all the way to 1911. And I've got those studies on my website. So please go and review those. I just wanted to share this with you because I thought this was fascinating. Time Magazine in 1957, they wrote an article about a Philadelphia bacteriologist who reported success in cultivating an obscure microbe, a spirochete, which she found in the spinal fluid of MS patients. And she believed that multiple sclerosis could be caused by the spirochete and early intervention could lead to a cure or alleviation of the disease. 1957. And again, when you look from 1911 all the way up to the 1960s or 70s that I have and more current, and that is not all the research. I just put a few together, but those 50 studies that were prior to World War II, crazy. They were finding these spirochetes in the spinal fluid and in the brains and in the blood of MS patients. Another way that we can become infected with these microbes is through worms. Dr. Alan McDonald, a pathologist in the United States, released this profound study. And I really hope you guys help me get the word out about this because it's ridiculous. He did this just a few years ago and this still is not understood by most of the researchers. He found these small nematode worms in every MS patient tested. And inside these worms, he found that they were loaded with Borrelia. So in this picture here, you can see there's two worms. The red arrows point to one worm, the blue arrows point to a second worm. And the green lit up part is a fluorescent dye that is attracted to the genetic material of Borrelia, which is the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. So you can see that these worms are loaded with Borrelia. So we're infected with these worms through biting insects again, through ticks, mosquitoes, etc. And if we have a healthy, strong immune system, then our immune system will deal with the Borrelia, with the worms, etc. But when we are infested with parasites in our intestines and fungal overgrowth and throughout the body and our immune system is weaker, we're in a state of dysbiosis. When we're infected with Borrelia, 
And with these worms, then they, the worms will make their way into the central nervous system. And that's what Dr. Alan McDonald found many, many worms, especially in the spinal fluid, but they're carrying Borrelia in them. So they are infecting us with Borrelia. That is another big reason why we end up with Borrelia in the central nervous system, because it wasn't just one or two cases, but every case that he tested found these worms in the spinal fluid and they were loaded with Borrelia. So as the worm is living in our central nervous system, depositing their waste, infecting us with Borrelia, not a good thing. Dr. Klinghardt is one of my hero doctors, and I've studied under him, take, taken several workshops by him. He shared, we never had in the past five years, a single MS patient who did not test for Borrelia burgdorferi, not a single one. And that is consistent with what we see in our students in the Live Disease Free Academy, that they have many symptoms of these vector-borne infections associated with Lyme disease. So again, it's not just Borrelia, but Babesia, Bartonella, Ehrlichia, and many others. So I really hope that this video has helped you to appreciate what you're dealing with and what kind of infections you have to treat to recover. There is no diet or exercise that will get these microbes out of your body. You physically have to treat them. You have to use a holistic approach. You have to support your body, build your body up. Yes, there is no magic pill. You have to change your lifestyle. You have to adopt different habits, healthy habits, so that you can make sure to recover, but then never end up in this position again. If you find this exciting, if this really helped you to understand what you're dealing with, please help me to get the word out. Please share this video with others. Give it a like if you really enjoyed what I shared. And if you want to continue to learn about what you need to do to recover from chronic disease, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Live Disease Free, and hit that notification bell so that you will be notified every time I put out a new video. The information that I share on these videos has saved my life and the lives of many wellness champions. So if you're at the place where you're like, Pam, this sounds really interesting and you haven't met me before, watch my videos. But if you're at the place where, Pam, this makes perfect sense. I've watched your videos. I'm ready to start treating. If you're at that place, make sure to click on the link to watch my masterclass training where I will tell you all about these infections, share a whole bunch of successes with you of real people, and tell you all the steps that we take to recover. And if you're ready, if you're ready to join me in the academy and become a wellness champion, then there is a place where you can click on the button and you can fill out a form and you and I will chat and you can get started right away and you can become a wellness champion and make this your very best year. So with that, make sure to subscribe and share this with people that you know need this information. And we'll see you on the next video, which will be talking about the link between multiple sclerosis and viruses. Take care and bye-bye for now.